Wayne Woods, was born on October 11, 1965, in Livingston, Texas. A seventh grade dropout, Woods was so illiterate that he had to refer to a spelling list just to write simple notes to his family. He had IQ scores of 80 and 78 during elementary school. His IQ score right before his murder trial was 70, and another in 2002 returned 68. Woods also worked as a short order cook and roofer. In the early morning hours of April 30, 1997, Bobby Wayne Woods went to the home of his ex-girlfriend Shawna Patterson in Granbury, Texas. Though they had previously lived together, the two had split up. Woods later admitted to having used drugs before going to the house, including crank and PCP. Shawna was not at home when Woods arrived, but he found an open window into the bedroom where Shawna's two children Sarah, 11, and Cody, 9, were sleeping. He grabbed Sarah by the foot. Cody awoke to Sarah's screams as Woods beat her chest. Woods forced the two children to leave through the window in their night clothes and took the children in his car to a cemetery. En route, Cody, in the back seat, noticed a black-handled knife in the back of the car. At the cemetery, Woods took Cody out of the car and asked him if his mother was seeing anyone else. He hit Cody, bashed him against a tree and commenced strangling him in front of the car. Cody later testified that he thought he was going to die. He awoke some time later, crawled over a fence, and attracted the attention of a horseback rider who called the police. The police later found Woods and told him that they had the whole story from Cody. They asked him to tell them where to find Sarah, hoping that she was still alive. Woods told them, you will not find her alive. I cut her throat. He then led the police to Sarah's body and gave them two written statements. In the statements, he admitted to having had sexual contact with Sarah before leaving the house, that he had taken drugs, and that after Cody fell unconscious in the cemetery, Sarah had started screaming. He left with her in the car toward a bridge on Highway 144. She continued to yell that she would tell the police that he had hit Cody. He attempted to quiet her by holding a knife to her throat. According to his statement, Sarah jerked and the knife cut her throat. Her body was clothed in an inside-out shirt, a sports bra, and a pair of shorts, without panties. Her throat had been deeply cut, severing her larynx and several major arteries and veins, causing massive external bleeding that was the cause of her death. Later investigation found Woods' semen on Sarah's bed cover, indicating that he had had sexual contact with her. This was borne out in other evidence, including statements by Woods himself, Sarah's friends, notes she had left in her diary indicating that she hated Woods and wanted him gone, and that she had contracted the sexually transmitted disease human papillomavirus and Woods was also infected with HPV. When Sarah's body was later found, forensic evidence including larvae development in her traumatized genitals also indicated that she had been sexually molested shortly before her death. In addition to finding Woods's semen on Sarah's blanket, Investigators found a large butcher knife, stained with Sarah's blood, inside the trash bag that Woods had borrowed from a neighbor the morning after he abducted Sarah and Cody. The bag also contained a pawn ticket bearing Woods' signature and address for items he admitted stealing from the Patterson home. Sarah's blood was on Woods' jersey, which was in the back of his car. Her panties were on the car's floorboard. 
There was evidence that Woods had scratches on his face and arms on the day after the murder that were not there the day before. Woods was arrested and charged with capital murder and was indicted on June 4, 1997, in Hood County, Texas. The indictment charged him with the murder of Sarah Patterson in the course of committing or attempting to commit the kidnapping of Sarah and Cody Patterson, or in the alternative, the murder of Sarah in the course of committing or attempting to commit the aggravated sexual assault of Sarah. He was also indicted for the attempted capital murder of Cody, arising out of the same criminal transaction. On Woods's motion, venue was changed to Lano County, where he pleaded not guilty. At trial, Woods testified on his own behalf and admitted to the general contours of that morning's events, including the abductions, but not to the murder. Woods claimed the children were accidentally injured. He said he had taken them to a graveyard where they were playing and Cody had jumped on his back and was accidentally hurt when Woods stumbled against a fence post. He then blamed a cousin who had died before the trial for Sarah's murder, however the DNA evidence clearly pointed to Woods. Woods was found guilty by the jury on May 21, 1998. During the punishment phase of the trial, the jury was presented with evidence of Woods's future dangerousness, including toxicology evidence rebutting Woods's claims that he was under the influence of drugs at the time of the murder and witnesses who testified regarding Woods's affinity for knives and his propensity to taunt people with them. There was psychiatric testimony that Woods had an antisocial personality disorder. When combined with his violent tendencies, he posed a continuing threat to commit future acts of criminal violence. Following the punishment hearing, the jury returned affirmative answers on May 28 on the issues relating to Woods's future dangerousness and intent to commit murder, and a negative answer on the existence of mitigating circumstances to justify a life sentence. The Lano County Trial Court sentenced Woods to death. In October 2008, the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals halted Woods' scheduled execution to investigate new claims by his attorneys that he was mentally retarded. About the claims, Richard Haddix, the prosecutor from Woods' capital murder trial said, there was no history of mental retardation. There were no special education classes ever afforded him. He graduated on time wasn't held back in any grades. He was functional. He had a driver's license. Prior to being arrested for this murder, Woods had worked as a short order cook. The prison psychologist testified that Woods' IQ was 83 and that there was no history of mental health treatment. Testimony also showed that Woods had checked out over 100 books from the prison library. Bobby Wayne Woods, 44, was executed by lethal injection on the 3rd of December 2009 in Huntsville, Texas for the abduction and murder of his ex-girlfriend's 11-year-old daughter. Bobby Wayne Woods received lethal injection about a half hour after the U.S. Supreme Court refused to halt his punishment which was delayed briefly until the high court ruled in his case. His lawyers had argued Woods was mentally impaired, making him ineligible for execution, and that previous appeals to spare Woods' life were unsuccessful because of shoddy work by his lawyer at the time. Tests administered to Woods put his IQ anywhere from the 60s to the 80s. An IQ of 70 is considered the threshold for mental impairment. Asked by Warden if he had a final statement, Woods lifted his head from the pillow on the death chamber gurney and replied, Bye. I'm ready. Eight minutes later, 
At 6.40 p.m. he was pronounced dead. The execution was the 24th and last schedule for that year in Texas, where 18 inmates received lethal injection in 2008 in the nation's busiest capital punishment state. Thank you for watching Death Row.